So, uh, good day to everybody. Today we are discussing about the common problems a sonologist or a radiologist faces while doing obstetric Doppler. In obstetric Doppler, one of the first things to see is the uterine artery. And this is the right uterine artery you can see, and that is the right external iliac artery. The right uterine artery passes over the right external iliac artery as it goes towards the uterus medially. And you can see here, you can see, this is the external iliac artery, which changes color from blue to red. The blue color signifies reverse flow during diastole, and the red color signifies forward flow in systole in the external iliac artery. However, the uterine artery shows continuous red flow, red signal. That is a sign that there is continuous flow even during diastole. There is no reverse flow in diastole in the uterine artery. This is a hallmark of one of the one of the first signs that this is the uterine artery. What does the spectral Doppler tracing show? So we try to take a spectral Doppler tracing. Initially, a lot of movements due to maternal respiratory movements and fidgeting by the mother. So we had a poor waveform. We tried to get a waveform on the right uterine artery. And you can see there is slight movement and the waveform is not so good. The sample gate is not exactly over the uterine artery. We're trying, we're trying, and then repeated it. Still not good. We're trying to get a good sample of the uterine artery here. That is the external lake artery. And here we got a good uterine artery waveform on the right uterine artery. And that's the waveform. And you can see this is the systolic uh, wave. And that is the diastolic part of the waveform. Again, systolic, and then you have the diastolic part. And so this baby was slightly smaller for date by about two to three weeks. So the, the, radio, the gynecologist wanted to know if this baby had uh, a, a Doppler, abnormal Doppler. So we did the Doppler and this is what we found. So the waveform is reasonably good, a normal uterine artery waveform. Again, the, the artery has slipped out of view of the sample gate. We again trying, we got a good waveform again. And that is the uterine artery waveform, uh, it's good. And on the, on the left side, we did the same thing. And you can see the waveform is good. Very high diastolic flow, which is good. So there is no real major abnormality in the uterine arteries. This is what we can say from this waveform. As you go further, you can see the waveform is good. A lot of diastolic flow. Uh, systolic flow is, also, flow is also good. And again, the uterine artery has now slipped because of maternal movement. Mother kept fidgeting a little bit. Uh, feeling, un, feeling a little bit uneasy or uh, not, not too comfortable in the position. So we just wait for the correct the position of the, the sample gate over the uterine artery. And we can see, we try and see. Again, we'll try to get the waveform. That is the uterine artery. That is the external leg artery. Yeah, that is the uh, uterine artery. Again, on the left side, a good uterine artery waveform. That is the waveform. And you can see a very high diastolic flow. And that is the, uh, the RI is only 0.38 on the right side. Let us see the left side, uh, RI, the R resistive index. And the RI here on the left side, the RI is 0.34, which is also very good. And so the RI on the resistive index is very low, which suggesting which is a good diastolic flow and low resistance flow in the uterine artery on both sides. Here you can see the umbilical artery, again, trying to get a good umbilical artery pickup, uh, waiting for the, trying to get the rest the sample gate correct over the umbilical artery. And you can see the umbilical artery shows a good waveform has come, but you can see that is alternating high and low uh, peaks in the waveform. So this is some kind of disturbance due to fetal respiratory movements. Respiratory movements can cause variation in the systolic peak of the umbilical artery. And that is what we see here. There's a good umbilical artery waveform. And you can see the waveform is alternating in high and low. And that's still good. And let's see the RI in the umbilical artery. It is 0.59, which is comparatively low. We'll see if the RI in the MCA is more than the RI in the, uh, in the umbilical artery. If that is true, if that is the case, then we have a normal uh, obstetric Doppler, more or less. Uh, uterine artery, as we saw, was already normal and that is the umbilical artery waveform. And now we go to the umbilical artery again, we're trying. 
once again try to take three or four readings and you can see again uh, right directly over the umbilical artery and you're getting a good waveform here and still we are seeing the disturbance due to fetal respiratory movements there is slight variation in the umbilical artery waveform now we're trying the mca or the middle cerebral artery and you can see the that is the mca here that is the fetal head and that is the fetal brain mca is here and you're trying to get a good waveform of the mca and you can see very high uh, waves here that is because the PRF or the scale is kept very low. We reduce the scale, increase the scale and reduce, increase the PRF. We got slightly better uh, waveforms fitting within the window. So whenever the waveform is very high, you increase the PRF. Uh, as in this case, it is low and you increase the PRF, the waveform becomes smaller and you see the scale has increased. So the scale has increased. And we're trying to get a good uh, MCA waveform yeah, that's a good MCA waveform now. And you can see diastolic flow, low diastolic flow, and a good peak systolic velocity. So let's see the reading at the end of the study. Let's see the waveform within the um, uh, middle cerebral artery or the MCA. So that is the waveform in the MCA. And that is, we'll try to get a good. Uh, spectral Doppler trace of the MCA. <coughs> so despite fetal movement and respiratory movement, we're getting a good spectral Doppler trace somewhere here. Here you can see this is a, a good spectral Doppler trace and that's where we'll take the measurements of this MCA. So let's see the reading that we get on the MCA. It will come up very soon. And that is a good MCA trace. And you can see the reading of the MCA is the RI is 0 0.76, which is far higher than the RI in the uh, umbilical artery. So the RI of MCA was by the RI of uh, umbilical artery or uh, the cerebral plasma ratio is greater than one, so which is a good sign. So the MCA and the umbilical arteries and the uterine arteries are normal. Now we see the now we see the uh, ductus venosus, which is a very important vessel. And this is the umbilical vein, and that is the umbilical. This is the ductus venosus, and you can see the ductus venosus shows multiple colors, aliasing, typical of the ductus venosus. This is the ductus venosus, and the baby is moving due to fetal respiratory movements. A very difficult uh, thing to do a good trace of the ductus venosus may not be possible. So you just wait for some time and repeat the scan and the baby stops his respiratory movements or we make do with whatever we get uh, uh, of the ductus venosus. So here's what we get in the ductus venosus, a typical M-shaped waveform, but not the best waveform for the fetal respiratory movements. And it's a normal ductus venosus waveform, high diastolic flow, which is also good. And that ends our session.